Greetings and happy holidays, everybody. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to our end of the year 2019 top releases of the year. Uh, this year, I'm going to actually do my top 30. These are my favorite 30 albums of the year. I'm going to go number 30 through number one. Uh, quick little thing about this year, though. You know, normally in past years, as long as I can remember, uh, since I've been manning Sea of Tranquility, both the online webzine and here on YouTube, I would, you know, during the course of the year, all the albums I listen to and review, uh, I generally keep a running tab going of every release that I listen to, enjoy, review, what have you. If for me, so we do a rating system on Sea Tranquility on the web scene, uh, you know, zero to five, five being absolutely perfect, outstanding, and zero, well, you know what that is. Uh, everything that I rate a four and up, so a four, a 4.5, or a five, goes onto a list that I keep compiled all year. These are the really special ones. At the end of the year, I generally, I probably start doing this about mid-November, I start to go through that list and putting it into, you know, my favorites of the year and putting it into some kind of order, taking out the ones that maybe aren't quite as good as the ones that I keep on the list and coming up with that final list, whatever it might be. In years past, I sometimes review three, four, five hundred albums a year. Not quite this year. Uh, I, I don't think I even reviewed 150 albums that, this year or listened to 150 albums, which for me just goes to show how busy I've been with you know running this um, YouTube channel and the Comic Book Geezers channel and my day job and everything else that's been going on in my life. So I really have not listened to a lot of stuff this year, more so than any other year in recent memory. So my top list was actually 30 this year. I usually do a top 50, a top 75, a top 100, and then a million honorable mentions this year. Uh, I did a top 30. I had some that didn't quite make the list, but uh, these I feel pretty special, you know, or I feel pretty strongly that these are the, the most special ones that I've listened to and reviewed or at least, you know, dove into this year, okay? And there are some that didn't make the cut, because maybe I listened to them way too late in the year. There was a bunch that I got in really late. There's one here. In fact, I'll get to it in a minute. I'll mention, and I'll mention it when I get to it. That probably, if I've had them longer, would finish a little higher. But I'm pretty happy with the list. And again, I, put it, I did as best I could with putting it into somewhat of an order. But this order could change at any given time. But just let it be known that everything that's on this list, for me, it was kind of the cream of the crop of what I heard this year. Okay, there are a lot of others that I listen to that I like quite a bit. So before you guys start, well, Pete, what about this? And Pete, what about this? Pete, I can't believe you didn't add this. Pete, Pete, Pete. All right, guys, if it's not on this list, it means I like these better or I never heard it. Okay, so, you know, if you want to do your top 10 or 20 of the year, that's fine. But don't question why or why I didn't put stuff on this list. All right, again, this is all, it's just a matter of opinion. It's what you got a chance to listen to, what you liked. So uh, this is my best stab at a top 30 for 2019, okay? So let's get started with number 30. This uh, I got a couple that are late additions that probably, if I had them for longer, like I said, might finish a little higher, but I did want to include this one. I just got this recently. I know it's been out for a little while. Uh, the Flower Kings, Waiting for Miracles, comes in at number 30. I'm a big Flower Kings fan. I dig it, you know? Swedish prog rock, modern-day prog rock. Quite good, epic-sounding, Roy Nostalt and company. Always been a fan. <clears throat> this is a great one on Inside Out Records, Sony Music. Symphonic, melodic, very strong. I'm going to stay in Sweden. All right, I'm a, I've been a big fan of the Transubstanz record label for many, many years. They specialize in mostly Scandinavian 70s style hard rock bands and prog bands. Uh, this band is called Skanska Nord. It's called Blues from the Tombs. You've seen me talk about this before throughout the year. Uh, a great, great bluesy heavy rock album. Totally sounds like it came from the 70s. Uh, little bits of Zeppelin, little bits of Sabbath, little bits of Mountain. Maybe some uh, cactus in spots. Great guitar work. Really cool vocals. Occasional bluesy harmonica in spots. Great grooves. Some of the tunes are kind of doomy. All right, like Sabbathy pentagram type of thing. Some are more kind of just like a straight blues rock thing. Some have like a Zeppelin vibe. Uh, 
really good. The grooves are outstanding. Like I said, the riffs are great. Killer, killer album. I dig it a lot. As I, you know, they Transub Stands doesn't release too many albums during the course of the year, but the ones that they do put out usually are top notch. All right, this one I only just got, God, like two weeks ago, if that. And I love it, love it to death. I reviewed it here on the channel. And I think uh, if I had gotten this a little earlier, this would be, in fact, I, it wasn't even on my original 30 list. And then I'm like, I've got to put it on here somewhere. So something else got booted out in the end. Sorry, Scott Henderson, I love you, but and I love your album. But Niall had to replace you on this list. And I think, like I said, if I had more time with this, this would probably show up way higher because I just love these guys so much. Uh, Niall, Vile Nilotic Rites. <clears throat> the latest from U.S. technical death metal veterans. Uh, new singer, guitar player. Doesn't matter. It's still great. They have not lost a step at all. Uh, it's just brutal. It's so progressive, so technical. Um, thunderous, pummeling. Amazing. Production is spot on. Tunes are so heavy. They got a ton of groove, but they're just so damn technical and progressive. If you love, excuse me, if you love uh, extreme metal, that's really, really intricate and technical with powerhouse drumming and great dual guitar attack that just shreds and just pulverizes with the riffs. Um, you cannot go wrong with this. Nile Vile Nilotic writes, Nuclear Blast Records. Yes, I'm wearing one of my new shirts that I got for Christmas, so no concert shirts today. I'll do it. Although I did get a couple new ones, which I'll be wearing in the, over the next couple days, so you'll catch me on those. I was going to wear one now, but I said, you know what? I'm going to wear one of my Christmas shirts today. All right, so you'll see the band t-shirts coming up. All right, so where are we at? Uh, that was number 28. Number 27, uh, an instrumental act on the Free Electric Sound label, which is the Vision of the Laser's Edge. This is fantastic stuff. These guys are uncanny good. One of the best instrumental power trios going out there. Morgable, I never know how to say their name. M-O-R-G-L-B-L. Morgable, Morg, Morgable. The story of Scott Roddy. Killer, killer 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 it's heavy it's fusiony it's proggy blistering guitar work amazing bass and drums it does not get much better than this guys if you want some intense intense instrumental prog and fusion with a lot of hard rock and metal influences cannot go wrong with these guys unbelievably good i believe are they from belgium belgium or france something like that all right <clears throat> number 26 this guy's such a great singer one of the most underrated progressive metal singers of out there lance king reprogram if you dig like operation mind crime and some of those great like progressive metal concept albums from like the late 80s early mid 90s you will love this futuristic sounding the lyrics are all about all the shit that's going on in the world these days killer vocals from lance great instrumentation crunchy guitars complex time signatures keyboards like i said kick-ass vocals Awesome stuff. One of my favorites from Lance. He's just been a real steady um, artist who just never fails to disappoint. Or never disappoints, I should say. Not never fails to disappoint. Never disappoints. Never fails to impress. Uh, <clears throat> don't mind me. My voice is going a little bit today for whatever reason. Uh, where are we at? Number 24, right? Yep, number not 25. Sorry. Nocturnus AD Paradox. Brutal. Symphonic. Technical death metal, Nocturnus, a band that kind of raised a lot of eyebrows with a, two legendary albums back in the early 90s that have kind of disappeared for quite a while. They are back, reconfigured, they've changed the name a little bit. Nocturnus AD or After Death, okay. Nocturnus founder is still there. He's got a new cast of characters. Paradox, tons of prog keyboards on here. Futuristic lyrics, just destructo killer guitar riffs blazing lead guitar solos and like i said a boatload of synths and keyboards uh a great album i dig this a lot um one of my favorite death metal albums of the year it's amazing 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 all right number 24 new england east coast prog rock veterans is izz don't panic is their latest album five epic tracks symphonic progressive melodic Great guitar work, great keyboards, wonderful vocals. Uh, these guys have a real kind of quirky, melodic style that I always dug quite a bit. This might be one of my favorite releases from them. Is Don't Panic. Very, very good if you're into progressive rock, modern progressive rock. All right, probably my favorite 
kind of jazz fusion album of the year. Uh, this is number 23. It's by, it's from the uh, Moon June Records label, Leo Leonardo and Company. All right, The Wrong Object is the name of the band. Into the Herd is the name of the album. Like I said, uh, all instrumental. You got guitars and uh, saxes, clarinet, keyboards, bass, drums, killer, killer grooves, amazing instrumental passages, just a really fun, upbeat jazz fusion album, contemporary jazz fusion album. Uh, if you love all the greats of the 70s, you will totally dig these guys. Fiery interplay going on there. Quite good. All right. Number 22. A return, a mighty return from an extreme metal pioneer possessed revelations of oblivion. You might remember possessed probably one of the bands in the mid 80s who kind of really kick-started the whole death metal scene although at the time we were calling these guys thrash metal but they were like so evil sounding the vocals were really different it's you know it later became what we know as death metal and this is a return to be saluted and celebrated a great album we only got one original guy on vocals okay the rest of the band is new but man is this album rich with killer riffs amazing drumming the vocals are outstanding it's thrashy uh, like i said it's it's death metal meets thrash okay the production is so good the guitars are produced so spectacularly man the first time i listened to this I was like holy moly cavalcade or riffarama <laughs> uh love it love it revelations of oblivion check it out again another one of the best death metal albums of the year back to prague we go from the UK, number 21, Big Big Train, Grand Tour. All right. If you like your neo-prog, neo-progressive music, lots of melody, lots of acoustic and electric arrangements. Okay, it's kind of folky in spots. Think like um, Genesis, Jethro Tull, IQ, kind of all wrapped together. Wonderful vocal harmonies, epic tracks classy band real classy band these guys have been very popular uh over the last like 20 years with a lot of people who are just into the modern progressive rock scene uh from the uk like i said just a, a great great band a great album and you know comes in this really cool like kind of digi book type thing here you know filled with all sorts of stuff really really nice really nice coming in at number 20 we're into the top 20 now uh, from Germany, a band I really dig a lot. Uh, some people call them stoner rock. Some people call them psychedelic metal. Some people call them doom. They kind of do a little bit of everything. Uh, at their core, they're just a really, really good classic sounding rock band. All right, I'm talking about Cadaver. For the dead, travel fast. <clears throat> a great power trio. Wah-wah guitars, okay. Effects-laden vocals. Killer grooves. A lot of kind of um, really vintage sounding riffs, okay? Just a really good hard rock band, like I said, with touches of psychedelia and prog and uh, just good. And again, kind of doomy in spots, but not really. Kind of stoner in spots, but not a little bit of everything. Great, great band. Um, I just love that. Love it, love it, love it. Number 19. This is a also a very late addition to my list, but this album is so damn good. Uh, it crept up pretty damn quickly. I'm talking about the latest from New Wave of British heavy metal legends, Angel Witch, Angel of Light. Gotta love that some of those classic New Wave of British heavy metal bands who maybe didn't really move to the upper echelon back in the day, like Angel Witch and Satan and Diamond Head, okay, and a few others, uh, are putting out great albums. Tigers of Pantang, putting out great albums here so late in their career. This is melodic, it's crunchy. Okay, it's galloping, memorable songs, killer guitar riffs, great vocals, outstanding, outstanding album. I urge you to check it out if you haven't. All right, number 18. Probably, because I don't think there's any above it to my knowledge on this list, no, uh, my favorite instrumental album of the year, uh, without question. And I think um, this probably could finish a little higher. I kind of like it sits in the middle of the pack here. But uh, I, I think this is just outstanding. Uh, the Aristocrats, you know what. Guthrie Govan, Marco Miniman, Brian Beller, the trio of doom. One of the great jazz fusion instrumental rock albums to come out this year. 
amazing, amazing guitar work from Guthrie. Incredible rhythms from the other two outstanding musicians there. Just an, an incredible album. If you are to listen, you know, I mean, there's a couple on my list here, obviously. But if you are, if you say to me, Pete, I only want to listen to one instrumental rock or instrumental fusion or prog album this year. What should I listen to? I'm probably going to steer you towards this. It's just amazing. These guys are such killer musicians. They are so good together. Ugh, can't recommend that highly enough. Number 17, Sweden's Evergrey, The Atlantic. Prog metal, power metal, gothic metal, whatever you want to call it. It's memorable. Great vocals, great riffs, fantastic keyboards, dramatic passages and arrangements. Love it. Uh, easily one of the, I mean, these guys almost never disappoint either, but this is one of their better albums in recent years. I think it's just so epic sounding, so melodic, so memorable. Dig that a lot there on uh, AFM Records now. Uh, the Atlantic from Evergrey. All right, <clears throat> where are we at here? Number 16, a debut from this kind of a super group project on uh, Frontiers Records. And for me, it really worked. And I think this got better and better the more I listened to it. Uh, a good friend of mine plays guitar for this band, Mr. Chris Caffrey. We've got Tim Ripper Owens on lead vocals, Steve DiGiorgio on bass, and uh, Mark Zonder on drums, of course, from Fate's Warning. We're talking about Spirits of Fire. Look at that album cover art. Uh, just a great, and again, traditional metal, power metal, whatever you want to call it. Uh, kind of reminds, got, you know, little pieces of uh, Judas Priest in there, a little bit of Sabotage, a little bit of Fate's Warning. It's heavy. It's melodic, memorable tunes. Rippers just belting and screaming up a storm. Tons of riffs and solos from Caffrey. The rhythm section is amazing. Uh, but, you know, but when it comes down to it is the songs. And I think uh, over, over time this has really sat well with me because it's just a really memorable album. and some really killer tunes on there. Hope we see another one from them. I dig it. I dig it. I dig it. All right. Number 15. Again, going back to the new wave of British heavy metal. Veterans, legends. Here's another one. Diamond Head. The Coffin Train. Man, is this good. Holy moly. Just a quality classic metal album. They've got a newish lead singer who is a powerhouse, people. Tons of great riffs on here. Amazingly, amazingly memorable tunes. Uh, great guitar work, great solos, thumping rhythms, a lot of galloping arrangements going on here. Just a just an ultra memorable memorable album from the second you put it on. And again, geez, you know, got Diamond Head and Angel, which both releasing such killer albums in the same year. You know, much we kind of had that last year as well. Uh, the new wave of British heavy metal uh, legends permeated my list last year. Here they are again, right? Great stuff. Speaking about legends. All right. We talk a lot about on the show about these like legacy bands who are still killing it to this day, who are coming up late in their career with albums that are as good, if not better than some of the ones they released back in their heyday. Thrash, Titans, Flotsam and Jetsam, The End of Chaos. I mean, Jesus, how great is this album? So good. So good. Memorable, memorable tunes. All right, and just insane grooves. All right, man, you put this on, just like every track is just like furious but melodic, and the riffs just stay in your head and never leave. All right, the vocals are outstanding. Just a great, great album. Uh, there's the guys right there. Awesome stuff. You know, their last couple have been great. They just keep keeping on. The guys from Arizona, I'm telling you. Coming in at number 13. From Norway, Magic Pie, Fragments of the Fifth Element. These guys are just have a way with combining like classic prog, classic 70s hard rock and early 80s, like kind of AOR, pomp rock. A lot of big thick keyboards that kind of, you know, could it be Uriah Heap, could it be proggy, you know, Genesis or yes, the crunchy guitars, the great vocals, the anthemic choruses, Magic Pie. Hit it out of the park once again. Fragments of the Fifth Element. Love it, love it. Number 12. These guys are awesome. 
I mean, man, the first time I listened to this album, I was kind of like, man, it's got a lot to live up to because their last album was so great. Uh, the first listening to it, I was like, yeah, this is really good, but not, maybe it's not quite as good as that last one. But the more I listened to it, the more I was like, yeah, you know what it is. <laughs> Ultra memorable songs. Um, man, the vocals, I mean, this guy just can sing up a storm. The guitar riffs are killer. The songs are heavy. Even the more mellower ones are heavy. Every tune on this album in a perfect world could be a hit on like FM rock radio. I'm talking about... Alter Bridge, Walk the Sky. Just love it. Man, Miles Kennedy, what a voice. What a voice. Mark Tremonti, what a guitar tone. Anthemic just doesn't even do it justice, man. Just like every tune is just like so memorable. Hooks galore. Crunchy as all hell. It's heavy. Forget the fact that most of these guys in this band came from Creed. These guys are nothing like Creed. Now, and I'm not discounting Creed, but I'm like, this is a different beast altogether. Uh, coming to number 11. Germany's Vandenplaz, The Ghost Experiment Awakening, another awesome progressive metal concept album from these veterans. I love it, man. Andy Kuntz, great vocals, symphonic arrangements, heavy guitars, real proggy in spots. Man, if you love like kind of modern day dream theater, uh, but even probably more dramatic and more conceptual with their lyrics and stuff, you got to listen to these guys. Just fantastic. Vandenplaz. Vendenplas, Vendenplas, or they say the name, The Ghost Experiment, Awakening, meant to be part one of a two-part uh, concept storyline. I think the, the second part will be sometime in uh, mid-late 2020, so be on the lookout for that. Also on Frontiers Records. All right, the top ten, you guys have already heard these before, but I'm going to go through them pretty quick here. Neil Morse Band, The Great Adventure. Neil Morse, of course, uh, solo artist extraordinaire, ex of Spock's beer. you got Mike Portnoy on drums. X of Dream Theater also in like uh, the Winery Dogs and Transatlantic and so many other bands and their uh, rest of the band fantastic progressive rock and metal concept album this is just fantastic stuff these guys are so good this band is so good one of the best prog acts going today the Neil Morse band love it uh, also on uh, oh, Metal Blade Records that's right uh, coming up number nine White Snake Flesh and Blood my beloved White Snake. Still killing it with these later latter day releases. You know, you got the revamp band here now with Red Beach, Joel Hoekstra on guitar, okay, Tommy Aldridge and company, David Coverdale, of course, leading the pack. Uh, just great. You got a good mix of kind of like the mid 80s style uh, White Snake along with their early, like kind of bluesy rock, right? A little southern rock, bluesy English blues rock type of thing. Just a lot of everything on here. Great riffs, great solos, some slide guitar on here, great vocals, the whole nine yards. Memorable songs. I dig it. I dig it a lot. I've liked all the White Snake stuff since they kind of started recording again uh, about a decade or so ago. All right, coming in at number eight Jim Matthews and John Arch. Arch Matthews. All right. Winter Ethereal. A great progressive metal album. If you love vintage, Fate's Warning. Here you've got uh, their former singer and their current lead guitarist and or current guitarist and songwriter mastermind getting together again. Fantastic album. I've liked this more as I've listened to it. Um, just man, because I, I love those first couple Fate's Warning albums, and I've always loved John Arch's vocals, and he just sounds amazing here. The riffs are killer. It's dark, but it's accessible, complex, brooding. Yeah, dig it. If you have not heard this, you need to, folks. I'm telling you. All right. From Norway, Symphonic Black Metal Veterans, Legends, Borknagar, True North, a killer album. It's quite progressive, folks. A lot of prog style keyboards on here, great riffs, a lot of great clean vocals, some black metal rasps as well. Genius stuff. Love it. New Jersey's very own Overkill comes in at number six. The Wings of War, another band, man. I tell you, they are just every album they release is a home run. They are on a late career resurgence. Great tunes on here. Believe in the Fight, Distortion, Last Man Standing, Hole in My Soul, A Mother's Prayer, Head of a Pin. Man, killer, 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 killer. <clears throat> Jeff who? Number five, Queens Write the Verdict. Todd Latore and Company. I tell you, these last three Queens Write albums with Todd on vocals have just, you know, for me anyway, it takes me back to the classic Queens Write stuff of the 80s. You know, I'm not here to diss Jeff Tate because he's a legend for a reason, 
But man, if I'm given the choice to listen to Jeff Tate's solo stuff since he left the band or the Queen, current Queensryche albums, not even a question, not even going to give it a second thought. The Queensryche albums have been terrific. This is a great, great release, The Verdict. Uh, instantly memorable, catchy, but proggy and heavy, just like the classic Queensryche stuff. <clears throat> I love it. Love it. All right, number four. <laughs> Doom Legends Candlemass, The Door to Doom. Man, is this great. Heavy. Heavy and doomy. Some of the best Doom riffs you will hear this year. I tell you, it's amazing how these guys just keep putting out one great release after another. Regardless of who's on vocals, right? They've got their original singer back. That's right, the guy before Messiah. He's back on vocals. Um, God, what is his name again? I'm forgetting his name. Hold on, guys. I will tell you. I will tell you in a second. Uh, Johan Lenquist, who sang on the very, very first album, Epicus, uh, whatever the hell, Doming Epicus Dumicus, whatever it's called. He is back. He was never really an official member of the band, but he did sing on that first album before they replaced him with Messiah Mark Holland, who, of course, is their classic singer. But, man, the original dude sounds fantastic on here. Heavy album, man. Kind of proggy, too, in spots, but just epic, epic doom. Love it. All right, the final three. Um, these next two are probably going to be no surprise to any of you who have been following this channel and me for a while, but number three, Encounter Venom from Opeth. I dig this a lot. Quite good, you know, as Opeth moves away from their death metal past, they're now basically, whether you love it or don't, I personally love it. I've, I'm with them no matter what way they go. Uh, mix of 70s-style hard rock, a lot of psychedelia, a lot of folk, a lot of prog rock, all right? The death metal is gone. No more extreme metal, but still some heavy stuff on here. Some cool folky stuff. A lot of memorable, catchy tunes. All right, and definitely some prog on here. But a lot of psych on this album, too. I dig it. It's quite good. Very different. And, of course, you got the two discs. you got one sung in English, one sung in Swedish. Number two, my favorite album from these guys in a while. Uh, I've liked, well, other than The Astonishing, I've liked everything they've ever done. Um, but I think this is probably my favorite album of theirs since Portnoy left the band. Uh, Distance Over Time from Dream Theater. This just to me goes back to the essence of what made Dream Theater so great. A lot of catchy hooks and melodies, epic arrangements, a lot of real heavy guitar, shred lead guitar, shredding uh, keyboard solos, but more importantly, really, really memorable tunes. All right, That's usually what Dream Theater is all about, no matter how complex and shreddy they got at their best their tunes were addicting and memorable, and that's what I get from this one. My number one album of the year, you know, I always uh, talk about what can be my, what is, what makes my number one album of the year, and I might think there are some albums that technically might be better, they might be better produced, better written, might have better, uh, you know, instrumentation and all that kind of stuff, but I usually go for, my number one pick is usually the album that I listen to the most during the year, okay? And for me, without question, when I first started to put this list together, I had a couple in mind, but I'm like, you know, which one just, because for months, I just could not stop listening to this. And I still can put it on and be like, yeah, I think that's my favorite of the year. Rival Sons, Feral Roots. Kind of different than the stuff I was just talking about. You know, I mean, I, I don't have a lot on my list that's like this. This is more just kind of good, old-fashioned, classic-style, classic rock or blues rock, right? But, man, these songs are so memorable. Man, the guitar work is just, it's just seeping. 70s. The vocals are just outstanding. But, you know, man, the songs are just so epic and, and just... You just can't get them out of your head. Even right now, I'm thinking of the title track. I'm like, oh, my God, just so great. All right? Just top to bottom, a fantastic album. And I, I've said it before. I'll say it again. In a perfect world, this album and these guys should be superstars. This should this should sell millions. Um, because, I, you know, you go back 35, 40 years, you had guys like Led Zeppelin and Bad Company – you know, releasing albums like this, doing huge business, selling out stadiums and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, here in 2019, you've got a very well-respected band, but still like, you know, two casual rock fans. They've never heard of them before. So if you're watching the show and you say, Rival Who? 
Rival Sons, Feral Roots, go out and listen to it, go out and purchase it, uh, but don't just ignore what I'm telling you here. Go out and do the research. These guys need to be on the tongues, the tips of everybody's tongue, Main Street Music fans. Any mainstream music fan should go investigate Rival Sons if they had not, and specifically this album. They've got a lot of great albums that came before this. Uh, I think this one might be my favorite, but you can't go wrong with any of them. So that is my favorite album of 2019, Rival Sons, Feral Roots. But man, we just went through 30 really good ones. Uh, 30 albums in 30 minutes. Look at that. Gotta love it. Got to love it. So again, just to reiterate, if you didn't hear your favorite on this list, doesn't mean I don't like it. Could mean that, you know, I maybe never heard it. Could and it, you know, in all likelihood, it just means that I like these 30 better. All right. There's there's no right or wrong answer here. These are just my personal favorite picks of the year. So before you start going on, but Pete, what about this? Pete, you haven't mentioned this. Whatever, just watch my whole list and then just say, that's a cool list, or maybe it's not a cool list, but here are my 30 favorites, or my 10 favorites, or 20 favorites. It doesn't really matter. And for all of you who said, who are going to say that, oh, there, there, there wasn't even 30 albums I wanted to listen to this year. They don't release good albums anymore these days. Well, you're obviously not listening. I'm telling you, there's a lot more than this, all right? There's a lot of great new music getting released every year by brand new bands or legacy bands that are still coming around and kicking ass. You just got to want to listen to it and check and spend the time checking it out. Don't automatically assume that there's no good music being produced these days because that is absolutely not the case. I know there's going to be plenty of people going to chime in and say, no, there's nothing, nothing worthwhile anymore. It's not the case. You're just not listening or you're not willing to listen. All right. Trust me, a lot of good music came out this year. I wish I had more time to listen to more. I wish that 2019 was like 2018, 17, 16, 15, on and on and on, where I listened to three or 400 albums and had, I would rather have a list of 100 albums that I loved, right, than just not being able to get to much and saying, okay, I can put together a list of 30. These are great. I wish I had more to choose from, right? It's just I didn't have the time this year. It's not about not, it's not about there not being good music. I just didn't have the time. So uh, I'll try and make up for it next year. We'll see how that goes. But anyway, this is on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're on YouTube all the damn time. So what's coming up, you might ask. All right, so I'm off, like I said, till the second. So I'm going to try and squeeze in another maybe top 10 songs of something over the weekend. Me and my lonesome here. I got a nice list. I might try to get to a couple of them over the next few days. Uh, Saturday... Mike Antonelli and I get getting together to do that uh, kind of jazz primer show, 1954 to 1964. So that's in the afternoon. So that'll be debuting this weekend. So there is that. So if you're a jazz fan, you'll want to check into that. If you're not, well, don't watch. What can I tell you? Um, but, uh, you know, other than that, lots more stuff coming up. And as we get into the new year, I'm going to be planning more history of shows, more top 10 song shows, more best to worst albums, those type of things. We're going to move away from like album wars for a while. We're probably going to get back to that like somewhere down the road. We might do uh, uh, album wars, uh, best debut albums or best concept albums, you know, that sort of thing. But we'll keep it a little more manageable. We're not going to do 150. All right. We may do like 20 or 30 or something like that. But uh, that'll probably be down the road a ways a few months. We're not going to jump into that anytime soon because I, I need a break to kind of do some other things. Uh, I'm going to do my best album cover show sometime over the next couple of weeks. And, uh, you know, I mean, there's so much stuff on my list. Some more rants, um, some more uh, what-if shows, uh, you know, all sorts of things. My list is long, people. My list is long. And while I do appreciate some of you uh, sending me suggestions of shows, uh, just understand I can't do them all. Every now and then I, I, I do see what some of your suggestions, like, ooh, that looks good. And I'll usually tell you, and I'll go ahead and add it to my list. Um, but I obviously can't do it all. But I'm going to try try and do as much as I can, right? So, But it's been a pleasure uh, sharing my top 30 with you. Some really good stuff here. Some really good stuff here. Like I said, it was a good year for music. It's a good year for music. I just wish I could have listened to more of it. So if you missed any of these... I'm going to drop into the description a link to my list of top 30, my favorite live albums, my favorite concerts, as well as the rest of the Sea of Tranquility writers and their list, which is all live on our website, www.seatranquility.org. I'm going to drop the link to that okay, in the description. In addition, we also, we do this every year, we're having a poll going on on the Sea of Tranquility uh, website of, I think it's the top 50 or top 60 releases of the year, based on all of the lists of the Sea of Tranquility writer staff. Okay, so what we did was we took a list of all of, uh, we, we took count of all of our writers, including myself, all of our favorites, where they sat on the list, 
tabulated all that to come up with the top I think it's top 50 or 60. I'm not really sure. I think it might be 60. The top 60 releases based on all of our uh, lists, okay, where you guys can then pick your favorite from that list. If you haven't heard some, you haven't heard some, but hopefully on that list you find stuff that uh, you've listened to that you like. Vote for it because we do like a little poll to see which uh, album of the year, which one gets voted the album of the year based on your viewers, based on the viewers. So uh, you can go to our website and do that. So I'll put uh, I'll put the link down below. So check that out. Otherwise, we'll see you guys over the next couple days, right? Have a good one. Take care. Hug and kiss your loved ones, all right? And uh, listen to some great music while you're at it. We'll see you real soon, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.